Praise the Lord, people of God. This is Prophet Scott Silver. It is essential that we understand that Jesus loves us very much. And we get a glimpse of Jesus' love for us by looking at the way the Father loves Jesus. We see in Luke 22, verse 41 through 44, the Father's love for Jesus. Jesus is at a point of extremity. He's about to go to the cross where the whole weight of the world is going to be on his shoulders. He doesn't feel strong enough to do it. He wants some friendship and companion. He wants his disciples to be with him and pray with him. They can't even do that. He finds out that he is all alone. And perhaps we find ourselves in positions in our life where we are also all alone. Well, let's look at the Father's love toward Jesus. He prays the famous prayer, Father, let this bitter cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Now, after this prayer, this very famous prayer is one of my favorite verses. It says, and the angel of the Lord came to help him. I prophesy to you today that perhaps you're at a point of extremity. You don't know how you're going to face what you know you must face. Times are difficult, times are tough. You're feeling all alone. You're feeling like even God, where are you, God? God has dispersed help to you. Help is coming for you. God has sent an angel to help you. He loves you that much. In some cases, he sent legions of angels just for you. Let me tell you a story. My mother, while quite young, was pregnant with me. And she wrote on the chalkboard in school, help me Lord, and then she erased it before her classmates can come in and see her prayer request. Help me Lord, help me Lord. Later that night, she made up in her mind she was going to church to get the help that she needed. She was not going to stay in that state and as she went to church, the man of God, Apostle Bruce Lester, wasted no time. He pointed to her under a prophetic anointing and he said, God told me to tell you, help is on the way. She began to weep. She began to cry. He called her to the front and said, the child you carry in your belly is a prophet sent unto the nations of the world and he ordained me a prophet right on the spot. She received help. She received a word. She gave her life to the Lord. But that wasn't the end. He said, the way you raise this child, God will hold you accountable to raise him in the fear of the Lord. And at that moment, she had a choice. Does she return to what she is used to doing? Or does she walk in the newness of life and raise this prophet in godly reverence? I'm so thankful she made a choice that pleased the Lord. Well, Jesus, he also had a choice. After the angel came to help him, the Bible declares Jesus was in great agony to the point where he sweated drops of blood. Help me, Holy Ghost. And he still had to make a choice to go to that cross. When we receive our help, when God sends us a word of encouragement, when we experience deliverance in the church service, when God helps us in whichever form in which he helps us, when he sends his angels just for us, this is often just the beginning of the battle. It is not the end. We still have to make a choice that is pleasing to the Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. We still have to make a choice that is pleasing to the Lord and to walk in the newness of what the Lord is bringing to us. Friends of God, I'm in South Africa today preaching the gospel because of a choice that my mother made and then I had my own choices once deliverance came to me. I want you to know that God will not leave you all alone. He loves you too much to do that. Don't even worry about that. What you need to be preparing for is saying, Lord, with your help, grant me some strength that I may make the right choice and walk in the new things that God has for me. Friends, God never makes the choice for us. He leaves the choice to us. God sends the help, we make the choice. This is Prophet Silver. Jesus loves you and I love you too. Make the right choice. God bless you.